Hello and welcome to Out of My Mind. My name is Robison Wells. In 2011, the Harvard Medical Journal released a study that indicated that 60% of Americans believed that schizophrenia led to violence. 32% of people believed that depression led to violence. You can do a Google background search and find results that back up either side of the story. For example, there was an article in the LA Times that found that 59% of mass shooters were mentally ill. On the other hand, an article from the Behavioral Scientist magazine said that research over the last 30 years has consistently shown that diagnosable mental illness does not underlie most gun violence. This question isn't trivial. Speaker Paul Ryan, after the shooting in Las Vegas that left 59 people dead and 600 injured, said that one of the things we've learned from these shootings is often underneath this is a diagnosis of mental illness. The problem with this statement is that it can't be farther from the truth. Stephen Paddock, who perpetrated this crime, had absolutely no background of mental illness. He had no psychi psychiatric diagnosis. He never even had a neighbor who said he always acted a little crazy. So what are we supposed to do with this information? I think there are a couple of takeaways that we could uh, look at. I think that there are a couple of different ways that we can look at this. First, what does mental illness excuse? We know that at any one time in America, 45 million people have a diagnosable mental illness. Now most of these are benign. They are uh, minor depression or they are anxiety issues. But some are bigger, some are major depressive disorder, some are, some are major depressive disorder, 5% are OCD or bipolar or schizophrenia. If we're going to say that mental illness accounts for mass shootings, then we need to define what mental illness really is attributable for. Fortunately, the courts have done a good job of trying to figure this out. The clearest example of this is the McNaughton defense. It's a British case, but it's the basis for insanity defenses. It states, to establish a defense on the ground of insanity, it must be clearly proved that, at the time of committing the act, the party was accused of laboring under such a defect of reason from disease of mind as not to know the nature and quality of the act he was doing or if he did know it, that he did not know what he was doing was wrong. It's easy to say that if there are 45 million Americans in the United States that have mental illness, then a good portion of shooters are going to have mental illness. But according to that definition of criminal insanity, are they sick enough that it justifies the crime? Take Seung Hu Cho. The, uh, the Virginia Tech shooter who killed more than 30 students and faculty. He had anxiety and he had depression and he even had selective mutism, all of which are diagnosable uh, mental illnesses. But do they stop someone for understanding the difference between right and wrong? Another good example is Adam Lanza the shooter in the Sandy Hook killings, who killed more than 20 first graders and six teachers. Adam Lanza had obsessive compulsive disorder to the point where he was changing his socks 20 times a day and his mom had to do three loads of laundry every day. But does that mean that he didn't know the difference between right and wrong? And would he, if he survived, be able to withstand an insanity defense? This is why in recent studies, most researchers, most researchers, don't say that 60% of shootings take place by the mentally ill. What they do do is they measure the shootings that are attributable to mental illness. In the 2016 book, Gun Violence and Mental Illness, psychiatrists Liza Goldman and Robert Simon state that 5% or less of shootings are attributable to mental illness. But I know so many people are saying, but wait, 
Stephen Paddock shot 59 people and ki killed 59 people and shot 600 others. Obviously, there's something wrong upstairs. Or you're saying no right-minded person would go into a school with a shotgun and start killing people. That's common sense for what it's worth, but it doesn't solve any problems. The point is, is that these people didn't have any diagnosable conditions. Paddock had no condition that would stop him from buying guns, that would make it illegal for him to own the things that he owned and to buy the ammunition that he bought. But if we're to blame shootings on mental illness, first we need to have evidence that these shooters are criminally insane. That they don't know the difference between right and wrong. Further, we have to identify, before they commit a crime, who is severely mentally ill and who is, who is not, both of which can be problematic as they could violate the second and the Tenth Amendments. After the Parkland shooting, President Trump tweeted, We are committed to working with our state and local leaders to help secure our schools and to tackle the difficult issue of mental health. But what does that mean and what does it cure? Are we going to mandate mental health screenings? Are we going to invest in mental health programs? And of course this leaves out a huge number of shooters. Uh, no one looks at the gun crime in gangs in Detroit and says, were they mentally ill? And no one looks at uh, turf wars in Chicago and says, were they mentally ill? And no one looks at abusive husbands who shoot their wives and says, are they mentally ill? And yet these shootings account for far more in the United States than mass shootings. I don't claim to know all of the answers, but maybe we should start looking in other directions than mental illness. Other things that are more common in gun shootings, such as the presence of guns.